Want to speak real Spanish from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at SpanishPod101.com. Hi everyone, this is Rosa and today I'll be teaching you 15 ways to remember words and these ways were submitted by fans. So let's start! A menudo veo videos en la televisión o YouTube que están diseñados para los niños pequeños. I often watch TV or YouTube videos that are designed for young children. Yeah, I think it's a really good way. Like, also when I want to learn a new language, like I watch some cartoons because they are always easier. And I think that really helps. Aprendo sobre las raíces de las palabras y cómo las diferentes palabras se relacionan entre sí. I learned about the roots of words and how different words are related to each other. Yeah, I think it might make it easier if you know why the words are formed like that. So if you know that, you can then like form, know how to form the words and it, everything gets easier. <laughs> Asocio nuevas palabras con historias, juegos o películas. I associate new words with stories, games or movies. So it's a good way to remember, like to associate things, like these mnemotechnical, I don't know, strategies. like. For example, to remember kanji in Japanese, there are some books that relate like each ideogram with like a kind of story. So then you remember the meaning and everything. And it's quite useful. It works. Asocio nuevas palabras con palabras que suenan similares en mi idioma natal. I associate new words with words that sound similar in my native language. This might work for some languages, but I don't know if this works for all of them. For example, Spanish and English, I think that would work. Asocio palabras con dibujos, fotos y escenas divertidas. I associate words with drawings, pictures and funny scenes. So yeah, th I think this is more appropriate for what I said before, like the kanji. Some of them you can kind of infer what they are, like what they mean, like if you have like a drawing. Like, they are similar to what they mean, so, uh, I guess that. Clasifico nuevas palabras con otras palabras relacionadas que ya conozco. I categorize new words with other related words that I already know. Yeah, I think it makes it easier if you can, always if you can, kind of, classify and order things. Escucho canciones y me aprendo las letras. I listen to songs and memorize the lyrics. I think this is a really good way, also, it's a way that you enjoy, like you like this, to listen to these songs and everything, so I think it comes to you like easier. You're not doing that much of an effort maybe, like, because you're having fun. Hablo tan a menudo como sea posible con los nativos del idioma. I speak as often as possible with native speakers. Mm, yeah, I think this is the best thing you can do. I mean, you can like read as many books as you want and l listen to films or songs or everything, but to really learn a language, like, you need to, like, speak it with native people. Leyendo lo más posible, en especial el periódico, me ayuda a recordar palabras. Reading as much as possible, especially the newspaper, helps me to remember words. Like, if you see the same word, like, used a lot of times, like, you get to remember that more easily than if you just have, a, like, a list of words and try to memorize every of them. And also you are seeing these words in a context, so you know how to use them and how yeah, they are used by the people, so hmm. it's a good way. Soy persistente en la práctica diaria hablando con mi familia o con mis perros, a pesar de que no me entienden. I am persistent in practicing every day by talking to my family or my dogs, even though they don't understand me. Why not? <laughs> well, you can also talk to yourself, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, it's very important to be constant. I think it's like the most important point. Like you have to be constant to learn a language. You just cannot study it for a week and then, okay, the next month I will study a bit more. Like you have to be constant. Trato de usar el lenguaje de forma cotidiana en el contexto de la vida cotidiana. I try to use the language routinely in the context of daily life. It's important to try to use it as much as you can, I guess. Because sometimes you have to adapt the, the language depending on their situation, depending on who you are talking to. Or, so it's important to know how you really use the language in your, your daily life, like how it changes on 
like not learning just by from some book, but learning it in like practicing in your day to day life. Yo uso la repetición, leyendo, escribiendo y hablando las palabras una y otra vez. I use repetition, reading, writing and speaking words over and over again. Mm. I used to do that. The only problem is that I normally forget like pretty quickly after that, but well, maybe there are some people that... Well, I guess if you do that in a constant way, like it's not like you repeat these words one day and then don't do that after that. Maybe if you do... Yeah, if you go back to these words, like it can help you. I think it can be a good way then. Yo digo palabras en voz alta para poder realmente escucharlas. I say words out loud so that I can actually hear them. It's very important because sometimes we don't say them out loud and then we are kind of afraid to pronounce it. We don't really know how to do it, so it's nice to know. Even if you can, like record yourself with a mic or something so you can hear yourself talking and you can know like whether you are pronouncing it right or not. Yo intento pensar en español para que se incorpore naturalmente a mi proceso de pensamiento. I try to think in Spanish so it becomes natural to my thought process. Mm. Well, it's fine, it's like you're using Spanish in, during your day, so... Like, if you're thinking in Spanish, you are also thinking in ways you can form new sentences and use the words you learn, so... Yeah, I think it's a good way. Like, if you don't have anyone to talk to in Spanish, It can also be nice to try to like talk to yourself and make your sentences and usar tarjetas, use flashcards. I have like some apps in my mobile phone, so especially to learn Japanese, um, it's really helpful. Like um, they show you new words and the translation. Um, then you get these flashcards repeated and depending on whether you are answering them right or not, like they show you these cards more often or not. So yeah, I think it really helps to memorize words. So this is the end of today's 15 ways to remember words uh, submitted by fans. Uh, I hope you liked it. If you have some any other ways to memorize words, uh, please tell us. And thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe. Bye. You probably already have language learning goals, but the real key to success is to make the right goals. In this video, I'll show you how with five tips to stop wasting your time and start learning. Hi everyone, Alicia here. In this video, I'll teach you five tips to stop procrastinating and keep your motivation for learning a new language. Some of these are study methods and some will be general ways that you can keep your study motivation up. While these tips are for studying a language, some of them are good for other things in your life too, such as new challenges or other types of goals. But before we start, don't forget to click the link in the description to get your bundle of PDF cheat sheets, including survival phrases, romantic lines, learning tips, absolutely free. Now, you probably already have some goals you're trying to achieve when it comes to your language learning progress. While achieving these goals is important, making sure you make the right goals is the real key to success. The very first tip is to set SMART goals. SMART is an acronym, meaning each letter in the word stands for another word. The earliest known reference to SMART goals was in an article written by George T. Doran for a 1981 issue of the Management Review Academic Journal. The acronym varies depending on its use, but each letter generally stands for some criterion that helps with effective goal setting. For our purposes, let's define SMART goals as follows. The S stands for specific. Your goals should target a specific area for improvement. Our natural tendency is to have a goal that's very general. If your goal isn't specific enough, you'll lack the focus and proper direction you need to achieve your goals. So S is for specific. M stands for measurable. Your goals should be quantifiable. They should be able to indicate progress in some way. You have to be able to track your progress, otherwise you won't know if you're getting any closer to your goal. 
As you see yourself getting closer and closer to your goal, your motivation will go up. So your goals need to be measurable. A stands for achievable. Your goals have to be achievable. Many people want to become fluent in their target language immediately. However, this goal is unrealistic. Your goals have to be achievable. If your goal is too challenging for your current level, it will only demotivate you when you aren't where you think you should be. Instead, think about what results can realistically be achieved given your level, your resources, and any constraints, such as time. So make sure that your goal is actually achievable. R stands for relevant. Your goals may be specific, they may be measurable, and they may be achievable, but are they actually relevant to what you want to achieve? Don't just do a lot of things. If you're focused on improving your speaking skills in your target language, make sure that you spend your time having conversations with others. Make sure you're doing the right things so that your efforts actually bring you closer to your goal instead of just giving you more work. T stands for timely. You need to set a deadline for your goals. If you don't specify when you plan to achieve the result you've set for yourself, it's very easy to put off the task. You can delay it until tomorrow, the next week, or the next month, and at this rate, you'll never get things done. So your goal must have an end date. So remember, tip number one is to set SMART goals. Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely. So for example, a goal you could make is registering for a challenging test, a test that's a little bit beyond your current level. I hate failing, so if I register for a challenging test, I'm motivated to study because I don't want to fail. This is a good example of a SMART goal because tests are specific. There are tons of different tests focused on speaking, grammar, and comprehension. Pick a test that can measure the specific area in which you'd like to grow. Measurable. Tests are measurable. Every test measures your performance to some degree. Whether it's a total count of right and wrong answers or a simple pass or fail, every test measures your performance. Tests are achievable. There's an important detail to remember here, though. Find a test that is achievable for you. If you're a beginner, then the most advanced test is probably not right for you. Find one that's meant for beginners. Then, after that one, work your way up to more advanced tests in the future. Tests are relevant. Most, if not all, language tests are designed to ensure that you're capable of performing to a set standard in your target language. Lower level tests are designed to ensure that you can handle the most essential aspects of your target language. But there are tests for all levels, including higher education entry exams that could be difficult, even for native speakers. Pick the one that's right for you. And finally, tests are timely. If your test is completed in a physical location, then this one is obvious. You have to be at that spot at the set time, ready to take the test. There's no wiggle room. But even online tests will most likely have a deadline for you to complete them. The second tip to help you stop procrastinating and to keep your motivation up is to create a diary or social media account that you can update every day. This may seem simple or even unrelated to language learning, but by creating a diary in your target language, you have the chance to actually create in the language itself. Creating a diary is also a great way to practice writing in your target language. Another method is to create a social media account which gives you the chance to connect with other people who are working toward the same goals as you. Maybe they can even give you feedback on your writing. If you're following people online who regularly share good resources, those can be really helpful for you too. It lets you find new tools that can encourage and motivate you, especially if they relate to some of your other interests, such as music or books in other languages. This is a really good way to take a few minutes every day to work towards your goal, without it even seeming like work. The third tip is to focus on understanding a specific TV show or movie. Try to watch a movie in your target language without any subtitles, or try to understand your favorite TV show that's in your target language. If you don't already have a goal like this, it can be a fun way to practice. If your friends often talk about a particular TV show, it could be a good way to study and a fun way to keep your motivation up together. Plus, TV shows and movies often use the language in a way that's vastly different from the conversations provided in traditional textbooks. So you often get to hear different vocabulary choices. 
It's a very powerful way to learn a language and end up sounding more like a native speaker. Tip number four is to enroll in a regular language course. Register for something you have to go to or you have to participate in regularly, meaning every week or two times a week or maybe even every day. The point of this is it's something that gives you a pattern to follow. Forming a study habit will help you progress very quickly. It will make it easier for you to achieve your language learning goals. Once you form the habit, you won't even have to think about starting each time. It'll just be natural. Have something that you must take responsibility for. You'll be more motivated to continue if there are others, especially classmates or a teacher, watching you progress. Look for resources inside your community. And if there are no opportunities there, look for things digitally. You can find many of our videos on YouTube, on Facebook, and of course, our entire video and audio lesson library on our website. The lessons on our website also come with assignment courses, so you can test your knowledge. The last tip is to make your goal public. Share your goal. Tell people about your goal. For example, if you want to give a business presentation in your target language this year, then tell your colleagues or your boss about it. Some people may find what you're doing interesting, and they can support you. This kind of pressure can help push people forward who have trouble motivating themselves alone. By telling others about your goal, you feel more accountable. Because you told somebody that you were planning on doing something, there's an underlying sense of guilt if you don't accomplish the task. You may feel that you have failed your peers in some way, even if there's no direct pressure from them. Using this technique, you can push yourself into moving forward toward your goal, especially at times when you feel the least motivated. And that brings us to the end of our five tips to stop wasting time and start learning a language. We've talked a lot about how to set goals for yourself and think about new challenges. First, I told you about creating SMART goals. Remember, SMART goals are specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely. Registering for a test is a great example of a SMART goal. Next, we talked about keeping a diary or social media account in your target language. Start doing it right now, even if you're still a beginner. Then, I suggested that you focus on understanding a specific TV show or movie. Pick something in your target language that you really love because you may need to watch it over and over again until it all makes sense to you. And next, we talked about enrolling in a regular language course. This will give you something concrete that you must take responsibility for. Finally, make your goal public. Tell someone about your learning goals to keep you accountable for them. You're much less likely to abandon your studies if you have friends asking you about your progress. I hope that these are useful tips that you can use to reach your language learning goals. And before we go, let me remind you to download tons of free PDF lessons to learn the language the fast, fun, and easy way. Just click the link in the description. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and share it with anyone who may find it useful. Do you have any good tips that you've used to help you reach your goals? Share them in the comments. Thanks very much for watching and see you next time. Want to completely understand everything in your target language? In this guide, you'll learn the top 10 ways to improve your listening skills with our lessons. Let's begin. Number one, take your very first lesson. The best way to practice listening is to just start listening. Expose yourself to native speakers as much as possible. So access any audio or video lesson on the site and press the play button to get started. You can do the lessons on the site or on the app while you're on the go. Don't have an account? Don't worry. Just go to the sign up page to create an account. It takes less than 30 seconds and it's free. Then click on the play button on any lesson and start learning. Number two, slow the lesson down. Now, if a conversation is too fast for you, simply adjust the playback speed in the lesson control bar and listen to it again at a slower speed. This will help you understand every word. Another way to pick apart every word that you hear is read along as you listen. Just read along as you listen and you'll never miss a word. You can read along with the lesson notes or lesson transcript that come with every lesson. The lesson notes give you the dialogue, the translations, and in-depth grammar tutorials. The lesson transcript is the full word-for-word -word transcript of everything you hear. You can also read along with the dialogue study tool, which gives you the line-by-line -line breakdown of the conversation, including the audio and translations. 
Number four, listen to the line-by-line -line breakdown with the very same dialogue study tool. What makes this tool so powerful is you can listen to each line individually and replay it as much as you want until you understand every single word. This is useful for mastering fast conversations that you would miss otherwise. Number five, listen to the dialogue track. The dialogue track gives you the conversation of that lesson in the target language only, no translations. And you have this tool in every audio lesson. Listen to it and see how much you can understand. Number six, download the dialogue tracks and make a playlist. This is a great immersion tactic. Download the tracks to your computer or mobile device. Then play them on a loop to immerse yourself in the language and improve your listening skills. Each track is only about 10 to 30 seconds, so it won't take you long. Number seven, play the vocabulary slideshow. You get the slideshow study tool with all of our audio lessons and vocabulary lists. Click on Start Slideshow, sit back, and listen. You can also play it on loop and immerse yourself in the language. Number eight, get listening assignments from your Premium Plus teacher. You can also get assignments covering reading, writing, speaking, and even listening from your teacher. These assignments can be tailored to your goals and needs. You can get a new one every week or anytime you're ready for a new one. Number nine, take the listening comprehension lessons. These lessons are designed to test your listening skills. You'll hear a dialogue in the target language. And based on the dialogue, you'll be asked to answer a question to check if you understood. There are no translations here, except for the subtitles. Read along with the subtitles to understand everything. Number 10, get even more lessons in the lesson library. If you want even more lessons from absolute beginner level to advanced, then visit our lesson library. You get instant access to all of the pathways and lessons that will help you master all areas of the language, including listening. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way, and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Want to improve writing in your target language? In this guide, you'll discover the top eight ways to practice and master writing with our lessons and learning program. Let's begin. Number one, write out the words and phrases by hand. One of the best ways to improve your writing is to simply write more. So write every word, phrase, and sentence that you learn in the lessons by hand in a notebook. You can write out the conversations from the dialogue study tool, example sentences from the lesson notes, and words and phrases from our vocabulary lists. Number two, take the writing quizzes. With every lesson, you get review quizzes to help you master what you've learned. Just scroll down to the vocabulary section or click on vocabulary. Click on take quiz and then click on writing questions. Number three, leave a comment on the lesson. After you're done with the lesson, be sure to use what you've learned, whether a new word or a grammar point. Leave a comment in the comment section and our teachers will review it and give you feedback. Number four, dictation. Dictation is a study method where you write down what you hear as a way to test both your writing and listening skills. You can do this with any one of our audio and video lessons. This method is recommended for intermediate level learners and above. Number five, create sentences using newly learned words. You can learn new words with our lessons, the word of the day, the vocab lists, and the core 2000 word list, which gives you the 2000 most frequently used words. And as mentioned before, you can also leave a comment with a practice sentence and our teachers will review it. Number six, write short messages to your Premium Plus teacher. Just write out a message and send it to your Premium Plus teacher for review. In fact, as a first step, all new Premium Plus users are asked to write a self-introduction and send it to their teacher. Your teacher will review your work, give you feedback, corrections, and help you improve your writing skills fast. Number seven, get writing assignments from your Premium Plus teacher. 
You can also get assignments that cover listening, writing, speaking, and even reading from your teacher. These assignments can be tailored to your goals and needs. You get a new one every week or anytime you're ready for a new one. Number eight, get even more lessons in the lesson library. If you want even more writing lessons, then visit our lesson library and under category, choose reading and writing. You get instant access to all of the pathways and lessons that will help you master all areas of the language, including writing. You'll get all of our pathways and lessons that are dedicated to helping you master writing. So if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way, and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Want to improve reading in your target language? In this guide, you'll discover the top 10 ways to practice reading with our lessons and learning program. Let's begin. Number one, start a lesson and read along with the lesson notes. With every lesson, you get bonus lesson notes. These give you the lesson in writing, the dialogue, the vocabulary, and the grammar explanations. So as you listen to a lesson, read along with the lesson notes. By listening and reading along, you hear how each word is pronounced and can easily keep up. Number two, read with the dialogue study tool. With the dialogue study tool, you get the line-by-line -line breakdown of a lesson's conversation. You get the text, the translation, the audio, and, if applicable, the romanization, so you can read and listen to each line individually. To practice your reading, reread and review each line until you master it. Then, move on to the next line. You get this feature in every one of our lessons. Number three, read along with the lesson transcript. You also get transcripts with every lesson. These are word-for-word -word scripts of everything that was said in the lesson and are completely free to access. So use these to read along. Number four, download the PDF notes and transcripts. Want to practice reading on your own time? Save the lesson notes and transcripts as PDFs to your device and keep them forever. That way you can open them up and practice reading at any time. You can also print the PDFs out to keep as physical reading material. Number five, practice with extensive reading books. Extensive reading is a learning tactic where you read as many books as possible at a level that's easy for you. And you follow these two rules. One, you skip over words you don't know. And two, you jump to a new book if the current one is boring. The goal is to help you master reading, vocab, and grammar simply by reading a lot without getting stuck on minor words. You can find extensive reading books from absolute beginner level to advanced. These are simple one line per page books and all of the translations are on the lesson page. Simply look for the extensive reading pathways in the lesson library. You can also download these books as PDFs and print them out. Number six, take your time and read slowly. Whether you're reading with the notes, books, or the dialogue tool, be sure to take your time. Read the lines slowly on the first try, just like a child would when they start learning to read. This is so you can get acquainted with every word. Number seven, then speed up your reading. Once you've read a line slowly and are familiar with the words, start speeding up. Reread that same line a little bit faster on the second try, and then a little faster on the third try. Doing this will help you read faster. Number eight, take the reading comprehension video lessons. These lessons are specifically designed to test your reading skills you're presented with a real-life scenario, such as reading a sign at the train station, and are tested on the words presented on the screen. Don't worry, you get the answer at the end. And translations are available in the dialogue section. Number nine, get reading assignments from your Premium Plus teacher. You can also get assignments that cover listening, writing, speaking, and even reading from your teacher. These assignments can be tailored to your goals and needs. You get a new one every week or any time you're ready for a new one. Number 10, get even more lessons in the lesson library. If you want even more reading lessons, then visit our lesson library and under category, choose reading and writing. 
you get instant access to all of the pathways and lessons that will help you master all areas of the language, including reading. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way, and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share it with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. See you next time. Bye. Want to speak real Spanish from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at SpanishPod101.com. Hi, welcome to Introduction to Spanish. My name is Alicia, and I'm joined by... Hi everyone, I'm Leah. In this lesson, we'll focus on teaching you the most useful Spanish words and phrases for absolute beginners. Make sure you're repeating the words out loud after I say the examples. Are you ready? Let's get started. The best phrase to learn when studying a new language is one that expresses gratitude and appreciation. If you had to learn only a single phrase, this would be it. We taught you this phrase in the first lesson of this series. Do you remember what it was? Muchas gracias. And it means thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Keep repeating after Leah until you get it. Muchas gracias. Your turn. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Okay, one last time. Muchas gracias. A phrase you would often hear in response to muchas gracias or thank you very much is de nada. De nada. It literally means of nothing, but it's used to say you're welcome. De nada. Your turn. De nada. Okay, one last time. De nada. Both Muchas gracias and de nada are expressions often used by Spanish speakers. The next phrase we'll teach you is perhaps the second most useful phrase of all. It's used to apologize or to excuse yourself. Perdone. Perdone. Okay, your turn. Perdone. Perdone. One last time. Perdone. Perdone is the formal way to apologize or excuse yourself. To say it in a more casual way, it's perdona. Perdona. Your turn. Perdona. Perdona. One last time. Perdona. Now you can say thank you very much, excuse me, and I'm sorry in Spanish. Let's move on. Asking where something is is an incredibly important and useful phrase to learn. You're going to need this when asking where the bathroom, the train station, or where the hotel is. To do so, say... ¿Dónde está? Then add the location. Cuarto de baño. ¿Dónde está el cuarto de baño? ¿Dónde está el cuarto de baño? Repeat after Leah. ¿Dónde está el cuarto de baño? Remember, if you want to be a bit more polite, you could add excuse me before the question. Perdone, ¿dónde está el cuarto de baño? One last time. Perdone, ¿dónde está el cuarto de baño? For a hotel, it'd be... Perdone, ¿dónde hay un hotel? Perdone, ¿dónde hay un hotel? Have you noticed how the sentences vary slightly? If the thing you're looking for isn't specific, a hotel, we would use the articles un, unos, una, or unas. On the other hand, if it's a specific, the hotel, then we would use el, la, los, or las instead. Perdone, ¿dónde hay un hotel? Perdone, ¿dónde está el hotel? And remember to thank the person if they were helpful. Muchas gracias. In this final lesson, you learned how to say thank you, excuse me, I'm sorry, and to ask where something is in Spanish. And in this series, we introduced you to the basics of Spanish pronunciation, grammar, writing, and more. Let's conclude with some parting advice from Leah and listen to some of her tips on how to learn Spanish from a native Spanish perspective. 
Every day, I see a lot of learners struggling with Spanish verbs. My advice is to start with the simple form of the verb and then learn all the tenses. Only move on to compound verbs when you've mastered the simple form. By far, the biggest mistake that I see learners make is using the incorrect intonation. Intonation is very important in Spanish. The intonation is determined by stress, which in a lot of cases is actually marked by the accent marker. We go into great detail about this aspect of Spanish in our Ultimate Guide to Spanish Pronunciation video series. We'll link that at the end of the video. Get comfortable with stress patterns and accents in Spanish, and you'll avoid making this mistake. My last piece of advice is to watch contemporary videos, such as our videos here at SpanishPod101.com. This will ensure that you're learning real, applicable Spanish in the fastest and most effective way. You've reached the end of this course, Introduction to Spanish, but it's only the beginning of your journey to Spanish fluency. Where do you go from here? Try our innovative Spanish culture series, where we teach you beginner vocab and even more useful phrases. Or check out any of our other video series. We have many different categories for you to choose from. Good luck as you continue learning Spanish, and I'll see you in another video. Bye. Bye. You've decided to study a new language, so now what? Well, you want to become fluent fast, right? Here are the top five shortcuts to learning a language. Number one, create a study schedule and set some goals. Many language learners are unorganized. Creating a schedule allows you to free up time to study consistently. Goals give you motivation and something to strive for. Number two, make it fun. If you learn how to make your study time enjoyable, chances are you'll be more inclined to study. Watch a TV show with subtitles or listen to some music. Number three, find a language partner. This is the best way to improve your conversation skills. It will help you gain fluency even faster and increase confidence when speaking. Number four, use word lists to build up a solid vocabulary. This is a great way to build up your fluency, one word at a time. Luckily, we have all the word lists you need with a range of topics from food to love. Choose whichever language you want to study and go. Number five, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Nothing helps you improve more than correcting your own errors. You're more likely to remember it correctly the next time around. Everyone makes mistakes. Don't be afraid to learn from them. There's no magical way to learn a new language overnight, but doing all of these can really help your learning process. And remember, if you're interested in getting on the fast track to fluency, sign up for your free lifetime account, no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. Start learning now. Learning a language requires a huge investment of time and often money as well. Many people are hesitant to put in the amount of effort required to become fluent. But learning a new language can be one of life's most rewarding experiences. Here are five reasons to learn a language. Number one, more opportunities. A new language can open up many new doors. You're able to work in countries other than your own. Tons of employers look to hire multilingual professionals every year. Number two, meeting new people. Get to know speakers of other languages on a more personal level. Meeting new people is one of the main reasons people begin to study a language. Making new friends is a good enough reason to start studying. Number three, exploring a different culture. Whether you decide to live abroad or you're just taking a vacation, knowing the local language will allow you to better understand the people. This can open your eyes to not only their country, but your country as well. Learn how people view your home from their perspective. Number four, health benefits. Studying a new language actually comes with health benefits. Keep your brain sharp by studying every day. You'll be helping your mind fight off old age and stay fresh. Number five, discover you can do it. We've heard every excuse that people give for failing to learn a new language. 
too old, not enough time, wrong genes. But you shouldn't let your excuses hold you back. You really can learn another language. You could even hold your first conversation just a few days from now. Don't make any more excuses. Just click to start speaking the language you've always wanted to learn. Sign up for your free lifetime account. No credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. Stop hesitating and start learning a new language now. To master a new language and understand everything as soon as you hear it, to read with just a quick glance and speak smoothly without thinking, you need to review. Here are our top five review tactics. Number one, listen to examples over and over again. By listening closely and often, you start to pick up the rhythm of a language, as well as correct pronunciation from a native speaker. Use our line-by-line -line feature that lets you both listen and read along. Use this tool to practice as much as possible. Number two, use our voice recording tool to master perfect pronunciation. Record yourself and compare it against the native speaker. If you sound different, then repeat after the native speaker until you're able to match them. Use our voice recording feature, which makes recording super easy. Number three, master your recorded conversations. Record conversations and go over them again and again. Master entire conversations and repeat them line by line. Use any of the dialogues available for download on our website. These come with transcripts of the entire conversation. Number four, use mobile devices to reinforce previously learned conversations. Constant review is the best way to progress in your language studies. Download the recorded dialogue to your mobile device and incorporate it into your music playlist. Quick reviews throughout the day effectively reinforce what you've learned. Number five, read with line-by-line -line notes. Read along with a native speaker to really master pronunciation and natural intonation. You should start slow at first, then slowly increase your speed. Your pronunciation will become more natural. You will also see that your ability to understand fluent speakers will greatly increase. You'll be able to improve your communication skills using these five simple review techniques. Increase your understanding of your target language. And remember, if you're interested in getting all these review tools, Sign up for your free lifetime account, no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. And start reviewing more every day. Today we're going to talk about four techniques to help you stop translating in your head and instead start thinking in your target language. This will allow you to have conversations with ease, read smoothly, and better understand native speakers. These are four methods to help you think in a new language. Number one, surround yourself with your target language. This way, you'll be completely immersed in the language. Without realizing it, you'll learn pronunciation, sentence structures, grammar, and new vocabulary. Play music in the background while you're cooking, or have a radio station on while you study. Just use one of our endless podcasts available to you. These are easy to listen to in the background while doing other things. Number two, learn through observation. This is how we all learned our native languages as kids. Words will develop their own meanings that relate better to your target language, rather than meanings that are translated directly. Number three, speak out loud to yourself. Even if you're a little embarrassed, it forces you to listen to how you speak. It makes it much easier to spot simple grammar mistakes. Number four, practice daily. If you practice everything for only one day, you won't retain the information you learned. The brain can realistically only focus for about 30 minutes. So studying a little every day allows you to absorb better. Follow these steps and have patience. You'll soon be able to achieve your language learning goals. Just make sure to remember these four methods. Sign up for your free lifetime account, no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. And start learning more every day.
When learning a new language, it's easy to think, I don't think I'm making any progress. What if I never reach my goals? We all get these thoughts from time to time, but are they worth being scared of? What are the fears language learners tend to have the most? And how can you learn to overcome them? Here are the top four language learning fears, according to our users. Number one, I'm not good enough to start speaking yet. This is a pretty common fear or misconception that most learners have. Here's how you overcome it. The best way to get good at speaking is to start speaking from day one. You need to open your mouth and just start talking. If you think you're not good enough, just focus on the lines you want to say. Number two, I'm afraid I'll never be fluent. You've got to set small, specific goals. Make daily goals, like having just a five minute conversation. As these small goals add up, you'll be speaking more comfortably. Number three, I'm not making any progress. There are two things you can do right now. Use the dashboard to track your progress. Our dashboard shows how much you've accomplished. Or try a harder lesson on our website. The lessons come with line-by-line -line translations and the hosts explain everything. Now you can understand something you didn't minutes ago. Number four, I'm afraid of not understanding anything I hear. This fear can occur when you hear advanced grammar and vocabulary and it just goes completely over your head. To beat this, simply read along with our line-by-line -line tool. It's the best way to instantly understand advanced conversations. Translations and scripts are right in front of you. For real life situations, learn useful phrases such as, can you say it more slowly? I don't understand. There's nothing wrong with saying that you didn't understand something. So these are the top four fears and how to overcome them. Luckily, we also have the perfect tools available to help you conquer your fears. Sign up for your free lifetime account, no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. Don't let your fears stop you. Start learning now.